Hi, and welcome to our webinar, which is a preview of some of the companies and speakers at the forthcoming Photonex and Vacuum Technologies event uh, taking place in Glasgow at the end of September. My name is Matthew Peach. I'm the editor in chief of optics.org, the news website for the photonics industry. Uh, which is published by SPIE, the International Society of Photonics and Instrumentation Engineers, which is also the uh, owner and organizer of Photonex and Vacuum Technologies. I'm pleased to be joined today by Dr. Scott Greenwell, who is the Managing Director and Co-Founder of Clifton Photonics, a uh, company in Bristol, uh, which will be taking part in the Photonex event. So uh, perhaps we can start, Scott, with uh, an introduction to yourself and your company and your areas of activity. Absolutely. Um, thanks for the invitation, Matt. It's really good to, to be here. Um, yeah, I'm Scott Greenwell, um, Managing Director and Co-Founder of Glimatonics. We are an SME specialising in optical spectroscopy, uh, specifically the development of novel hardware and software. And we also do integration of our bespoke instruments into existing systems. We also act as collaborators and partners in industrial R&D projects. Um, over the last few years, we've got involved with some rather large projects. Uh, the biggest one to date is Reinstate, which is a Rolls-Royce-led project with support from the ATI program. Um, in, in that program, we're developing inspection and analysis tools uh, which will help Rolls-Royce inspect parts buried deep inside the engine while they're being repaired. And obviously we hope that those technologies will have applications outside of aerospace. Um, I'm pleased to say that on Monday of this week, uh, we got confirmation that our Game Changers application was approved and we'll be doing a 12-month project on a proof of concept piece of work uh, co-funded by Sellafield and Dune Ray. And I'm optimistic that by September, we'll also be working with Cavendish Nuclear on their um, Optisort uh, sort and segregation project. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's Cliff and Photonics. Okay, it's uh, exciting to hear about your news. Um, and Thank it you. seems um, that already um, in, in, a, in a relatively short time, the company has moved from um, sort of research and development of uh, your spectroscopy systems into uh, a diverse range of application areas uh, from what seems to be uh, engineering into um, manufacturing and perhaps also nuclear engineering. So uh, how can you actually um, suit the needs of all these diverse uh, marketplaces? Well, the, the fundamentals are the same in terms of the science. So a technique such as Raman spectroscopy has applications in medicine in the same that it does in fundamental research or inside a jet engine. Um, the, the physics and the chemistry are there. It's just we need people to come to us with interesting applications and we'll provide them with the, the hardware and the software to make it work. Um, so yeah, the techniques are fairly um, agnostic as to how they're applied. Okay, um, perhaps you could talk a little bit uh, about your uh, products and your capabilities and uh, if possible, uh, how you can differentiate them from this uh, very broad marketplace uh, because uh, spectroscopy as a general subject is, is a very common theme at events such as Photonex. So how do you differentiate yourselves when you're, when you're pitching? Well, I like to think of us as a one-stop shop in terms of we're able to not only design and build hardware, but we can also make the software to make everything run and integrate with existing systems, which is quite rare within a team as small as ours. We've been focusing on the development of fiber optic Raman probes, and we've developed a new fiber optic Raman spectrometer to bring the two together with our own Libra spectroscopy suite. Um, Fibre optic Raman probes allow you to use the technique in places which otherwise would be inaccessible. They're only eight millimeters in diameter, which allows a whole host of applications which otherwise wouldn't be possible. So I think that's what's going to set us apart, and that's why we're excited to show off our new products at Photonics this year. Okay, great. 
and perhaps we can talk a little bit about the uh, event. Uh, Photonex and Vacuum Technologies uh, has been going for quite a number of years now, um, recently acquired by uh, SPIE, uh, and unfortunately, of course, it was postponed in 2020 due to the pandemic. Uh, but that has given uh, the organisers the opportunity to rethink the event and to give it this new location in Glasgow um, one year, and then it will be relocating to Birmingham uh, and on alternate years. So uh, have you had experience of the event before and uh, what's your thoughts about the new location? I think me and my colleagues have been to most of them in Coventry in the last 10 years. Um, as you can tell by the large collection of Thor Labs t-shirts I've got. Um, we've, we've always enjoyed the event. It's a good opportunity to not only see the new state of the art technology, but to meet up with people that you typically only communicate with through email or over the phone when you're trying to buy something or collaborate. So it's a really wonderful opportunity to to catch up and to have some face-to-face -face conversations um, in a more intimate environment that you can't really get in, in this kind of format. So yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. It's been two years since we've been able to do anything like this. Um, so that's that's why we are so excited to get back. Yes, that, that's what we've been hearing at uh, Optics Org uh, recently, that uh, People have been finding different ways of communicating and doing business over the past 18 months using this type of medium, but uh, that nothing beats actually meeting people in person. So when when um, the visitors turn up to uh, Photonex in Glasgow at the end of September, uh, what, what will they see on your booth? Uh, what kind of demonstrations will you have? And uh, secondly, will, will some of your team be making any presentations there? So we'll be exhibiting our fiber optic Roman spectrometer. Um, that'll be with, in conjunction with our fiber optic Roman probe. And that'll be in a setup in, in a glove box so people can interact with us and play with us and even bring their own samples if they want, um, just to see what its capabilities are and how easy and flexible the system it is. And uh, so that'll be the our showcase. Unfortunately, we're not presenting um, in the conference, but we'll certainly be going to see other people's talks and um, so yeah come by shell stand 414 and come say hello all right well we'll look forward to doing that <clears throat> and you've already mentioned early on that you've had some exciting news this week um, but generally speaking are there some new uh, presentations some new developments which uh, people may not have heard about before um, and which they can find out about when they come and see you on the booth yeah, I'm really looking forward to people coming to speak to us, uh, not only so we can talk about our achievements, but also to start a dialogue on how we could work together, as we've been very successful in the last year, in spite of the circumstances in, in uh, going into new markets and getting funding and new customers. So it'll be, it'll be excellent to, to try and start some new collaborations at Photonics. Great. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're... Uh new newish company has coped uh, what sounds like pretty well with uh, pandemic conditions. So how have you managed to uh, keep the business going and, and, and indeed find uh, new clients over the past 18 months or so? Um, when the pandemic hit, um, Rolls-Royce was our, by far our biggest customer. And as everyone will know, aerospace has been hit very badly uh, by COVID with um, international flights pretty much coming to a halt. That meant that a lot of our business halted and like a lot of companies we had to put everyone on furlough and make some very tough decisions on what the future of the company was going to be. We decided that when we came back we double down and invest in new equipment and try and pivot into new markets to make ourselves more robust in the future which is why we've been talking to Sellafield, the Game Changers team, um, Dune Ray, Cavendish to try and work into to other robust markets which um, aren't as susceptible to, to pandemics. And that has worked out for us, but um, I appreciate that there's a lot of luck involved there as well as just getting up and, and doing it. So yeah, I, I feel very, um, very lucky that we're, we're still here, but we've worked very hard to be in that position. Great, well, it sounds like um, you made the right decisions to uh... 
uh, invest and rethink things when uh, conditions were perhaps getting a bit tougher. And by the sound of it, it's paid off, which is which is great news. So um, one last um, idea uh, about Photonex is uh, the location, of course, which is Glasgow, uh, a city with um, a long and varied pedigree in photonics. Not only have we got some great uh, universities doing photonics research there, but uh, a, a significant number of big uh, startups and uh, UK-based um, div divisions of international companies. So will you um, take the opportunity to um, connect with some of the uh, Glasgow-based and Scottish-based uh, photonics um, expert companies? Absolutely. I'm looking forward to meeting some people from the Fraunhofer Institute. Um, they were recent collaborators on an SBRI um, project, um, but we haven't actually managed to meet face to face. So that, that'll be the first booth I'll be heading to when we get there. Great. Well, uh, Scott, it's been a pleasure talking with you. I look forward to meeting you in person at the event. And uh, we will uh, hopefully get the chance to meet and cover some of your exciting new developments when we all get together in September. And thank you very much. Thanks, Matt. I'll see you in September.